Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another video from the pi for all channel. In this video, I'm going to clear up that question you might have, which is, which library should I use to create my graphical interfaces in Python? We could have several libraries here. I've already tested almost all of them that are out there. And in this video, I'm going to clarify for you what the best options are and which one I consider the best for creating TikTok applications. So, I'm going to open Visual Studio Code Studio because I've already created a piece of code for each of them to make a login screen. I'm going to show you each of the features that will help you decide. And I'll clarify for you here on this channel. I'm going to bring you the step-by-step -step on how to create each of them. All right? So you open Visual Studio Code and we're going to start here with Tkinter or Tinter as people say, which is a native library of Python. With it, you can create simple interfaces. Okay, it's even a little more advanced too. If you have some knowledge, but it's very lightweight, so it's ideal for small applications. You can easily share and distribute it. It's really lightweight and it runs quickly, allowing you to cut the login screen that I created here. Look, only people are saying it looks like the Windows 97, Windows 95 interface because it's kind of boxy. But if you have a good understanding, you can still create something really cool, just like I wanted here. All right, so you click on the name login, a user you see. You can ask to remember the user create all of this here. Create a simple message box, okay? And there, for validation, this is the screen. You can also include icons here. By saving icons in your folder, you can place an icon on the login screen. Perfect. So, all right, here I'm going to show you the code. Look, it's not a very complicated code because we're just putting it together here, grouping the elements. So I created a class called login. And here I was adding each of the elements I created to make this screen. For the login, everything is organized in creating the login validation. If I put here admin 23456, as I mentioned, it said that the login was successful. Okay, admin, admin 123456, 123456. So I put here login successful. All right, that was the test I did for validation. So here we already have a login screen ready for your system. So the second one, I want to show you which isn't used that much, but I've used it to do some small projects as well, which is Will, right? What does this one do? What does Will do? It interacts with JavaScript and uses a browser to create its graphical interface. With that, you can use HTML and CSS to format your screen, making it visual and nice. And you might be wondering, can I generate an app to distribute? And in the EU documentation, there's also how you can use the parent, install it so you can use an executable and distribute your application or see how it's a requirement that you need to have the browser installed on your machine and almost all machines. There's a browser, all right. So I'm going to run it and you'll see the result, how it looks, okay? Maybe that started with my browser and put this really nice dynamic little machine that I created here with HTML and CSS. Okay, Nicrox, all right. Admin, admin. Stress, we enter the user, look, just login, successful. If the password were invalid, it would say here, invalid user or password. How is this possible? Here we use JavaScript functions to interact with the code and make it very visual and nice. Okay, and we know that the visual is very impressive. So you can create simple applications like I've already created using Will. So if you look at the code here, the Python part, you also need to have some knowledge in JavaScript. And to interact, because here look, the parent function, it calls this function, is it husband? To install HTML, where's the HTML here on the web? Here's all the HTML that I made. And this formatting, this interaction that is done by the parent, you, through a file. JavaScript. So it calls the parent function, right? To validate the login, right. And here it shows the notifications. This is a JavaScript function to display notifications on the screen. So look, all of this was created to display this login screen for us. Can you interact? You can create a really cool visual application using it as well. Right. I'm showing this library because I've already made an application and later I'll show you how I created a simple application. It also turned out to be very efficient. Visual. Using this one, I tested it back then and I thought it was really good. Cool, I thought it would be nice to bring you the third one that's also becoming quite popular. What is flat? It's based on Flutter so you can use its features. The ID already has a range of icons that you can use to make the effect really visual. And it looks really beautiful. Interface. Okay, so I'm going to open it here. You'll see, just look at this login screen. When we click, it already pops up here. The user is an effect that we can add admin, admin or Santa Duente 3. And we're going to come here, 
view. We'll just put this message. This message is customizable. We can even create that effect we did in Will to appear down here or up there. You know, you can do a lot of things here with flat, right? And we can show the password here. See, show the password for at least two, three, keep it really dynamic. And if you forget your password, you can bring up a screen, forgot your password, you can do all of that. So it's based on flat. Of course, it doesn't have all the features that flat has for creating applications. And what is the difference with flat? With Flat, you can build both web applications and desktop and mobile applications, right? Why don't I always use Flat in my projects today to create a nice and visually appealing interface? Because I work with a lot of data, and with Flat, when I use Flat, it didn't behave well, especially when I tried to use tables. Okay, tables here, he couldn't handle it. Except for me, using threads, it wasn't efficient. At the time I was using it, it still didn't meet my needs. So for the desktop application. I preferred to use what I had, or I go with six, which was more efficient to solve the problem I had at the moment. So flat, if you have a simple application, you can create something really visual and dynamic. Just see, it's a bit more complex than a six, so look here. Oh, here's the part of the login validation that I'm going to create here. Look at the colors, the widgets, that's it. It goes all the way from flat. You see, it's not a long code, but you need to have a good understanding to create an application like this. Here, really visual and beautiful that I'm going to teach you as well on this channel. I'm going to teach flat here, step by step for you, okay? And the third and last one, the fourth that I'm going to use, of course, has to come. There are other libraries too that I could bring up here, but these are the ones I consider to be the most common, right? In my opinion, these are the best. And the one I like the most, which I think can really create more complex systems, is PySide 6. With PySide 6, we can create amazing applications. It's PySide 6. With PySide 6, we can create amazing applications because it has been in the market longer, longer than flat. So it has been well developed, well done. So it already comes from a base in C. So it already has ready-made tables for us to use, resources, various widgets. It has its own QT, thread that we can use to avoid freezing the graphical interface. There aren't many resources here that I consider useful for me. For graphical interfaces, to create desktop applications, it's the best option on the market today. It's PySide 6 or PyQt, which are similar, okay? So I'm going to run it here, and you'll see that the result is the same. Look, it's practically the same result as the others. Of course, Flat has a bit more resources for animations and icons. So you can work with this in practically all of them, but Qt as well, we can create the animations, you can create the visuals and have all the tables ready so you can work on building your application. If you're going to create a complex application that requires a lot of data and data visualization in the system, I recommend Qt. If you're going to create a simple application and you need to impress with the visuals, you can use either Will, who will bring you HTML and CSS there so you can format it visually well, or Flat, which is already an essential library, is amazing. Actually, to create applications, okay, See that I can get the result with what I have. It's a very efficient result to execute the login here and succeed without validation. It will give a nice look and we can also work on the visual of the box month, making it very dynamic and beautiful. Okay, that's the big difference of what you have and compared to the others. The difference is that with Qt, you can build your entire graphical interface using Qt Designer. Here you do all the modeling of the interface and only worry about the functionalities. So that's already an incredible gain in productivity. So while with the other libraries, we have to build all of this. In the code, in Qt, you can simply create the entire graphical interface here, adding buttons, all the widgets, putting in frames, and edits, tables, right? And all of this allows us to create and apply a layout, making it dynamic. If we put the table here, we have the table view a table widget, a tree widget, tables that are efficient. We can only create our interface here, export the file, and work solely on the code. So that's why Qt, this is one of the many, the reasons. Qt, for me, is the best option for creating graphical interfaces in the desktop model. All right, then I hope you enjoyed this content. If you liked it, leave a like, share, and I'll see you in the classes where I'll teach you. Each one of them, the step-by-step -step from scratch, so you can choose the best library for your projects. All right, a big hug, and see you soon.